I am a kind of pundit who is actually responsible for the marriage of artificial intelligence and quantum mechanics. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, and there, there is a more aspect of it. No? Uh, there, there is a dowry aspect. Yeah. Artificial intelligence says that I need more resources. Quantum mechanics says that I will not give you resources, but you have to marry me to optimize the world. <laughs> no, that is that is that is kind of funny. All right. So you know that uh, since the dawn of time, I'm talking about the dawn of time means uh, when the humanity actually started in the universe. Uh, we actually had created something around 130 exabytes of data. So what does that mean? The exabytes of data. So, all right, you can see a few images over here. Okay, so these are the representations of the data. Okay. You might be thinking that data are represented only in the form of charts, graphs, and all those things. I represent data somewhat like this. Okay. So you can see a capital A. What does that mean, the capital A? So what happens that you write a letter A on the computer system and it takes around one byte of data. You write such letters in a piece. Uh, generally a typical page of a good book. I emphasize the good book here. Uh, it takes around 1000 such letters. Okay, so that is uh, around one kilobyte of data. Now you create a page, 1000 page book from those, uh, 1000 page book from such page. And you will make one megabyte of data. Just make it 1000, just fold it 1000 times, it's one megabyte of data. Okay, now the fourth image is of a human genome, the DNA. Trust me guys, you fold that one megabyte of data 1000 times and you are here with the one terabyte of data in which you can encode a complete human being. Uh, that's, that's quite an interesting fact, right? But you will say that how can a human being be encoded in the bits or binaries, right? Uh, human being has a lot of experience. Doesn't matter. What you do is that you take a HD camera, pass around the person, for 80 years of his life, every minute, every second, okay? And you get the one uh, gigabyte of data. So in one gigabyte, you can encode the complete human being. So you can imagine that how big is one gigabyte, okay? This is to make you visualize that how big is the exabyte of data. Okay, so uh, this is Amazon rainforest, okay? So it has around 1.4 billion acres of trees and every acre has approximately 500 trees in total. So 700 trees are there. So hypothetically, I'm not saying that it should be done. Hypothetically, what you do is that you chop those trees uh, and put it on a paper and fill that paper with letters. So can you imagine how huge that is? And you get one to two petabytes of data. Mind you, you are still not at exabyte, not even one exabyte. You fold it 1000 times and you get one exabytes of data. So you can imagine how huge is one exabyte of data. And in 2005, the total data which we got were 130 exabytes. More astonishing is that in last two to three years,
the data created is more than what it was created in the entire history of human beings. This is the report of the IDC sponsored by EMC. We as a data scientist can handle a little less than 10,000 exabytes without any kind of machine. Okay, uh, you just give us data and we will uh, do some kind of a statistical analysis and uh, uh, we can handle somewhere around 5,000 exabytes of data just like uh, without using any kind of machines. Okay, you give us machines and I will handle, I can handle around 12,000 to 30,000 exabytes of data. I teach those machines some kind of techniques and tricks, okay? I can actually study up to 30,000 exabytes of data. I can handle, I can get some interpretations from that, okay? Now, you see this growth, this is actually exponential. Just by 2020, it would be 40,000 exabytes of data. Okay, so even the machine learning techniques cannot get up to 40,000 exabytes of data. So how, how do you deal with it? Okay, so uh, why not uh, let AI and quantum computing, quantum mechanics fall in love with each other and let's get them married. Uh, how many of you know the bits, zero and one in computer science? Not the binary language, just there are two bits, zero and one, on which the entire computer science works. All right, cool. Only two states on which the computer science works, zero and one. Now, there are infinite states in between one, in between zero and one, which actually quantum mechanics states. You know, yeah, have you heard of Schrodinger's cat? Oh, cool, cool. Okay. So, then you know that Either something exists or something doesn't exist until you open the box, okay? So there, there are various states between 0 and 1. When the normal bits operate in the computer systems, it's either 0 or 1 in the classical computer systems, okay? But what quantum mechanics says is that what about if we make these two bit operates in the operates in the fashion so that they can intersect with each other that is zero and one okay so suppose uh, you have uh, two bits zero and one all right so how many operations you can perform in the classical computer system with those two bits you can just or uh, uh, you can just have the odd operator between them and it will be zero one one zero whatever Okay, or 0, 1, 1, 1, whatever. Now you have another operator that is 0 and 1. Okay, now you can see that you are not only having the four operations, but the operations have actually been exponentially increased. Okay, in the factor of 2 to the power n. All right, if you have two bits, okay, 0 and 1. All right. So you can have their decimal equivalent in the form of 0, 1, 2, 3. All right. You need to have four operations. But if you can make them, have, make them operate over the intersection that is 0 and 1, all those four equivalents you can have in just one operation. What I am trying to say here is that if you have one more operation between 0 and 1, that is AND operation, you can make all these operations which are in the classical computer, make all this happen in just one operation, okay? And in the field of, and that's how the quantum computation comes into picture, okay? There we call it qubits, that is the quantum bits. Okay, so you have, you have heard a lot of buzzwords among artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, internet of things, lot of buzzwords. 
at some point of time the classical computers are going to fail and I just showed you the graph the way we are generating those data it's in, in the next one decade the regular computers uh, even the GPUs will not be able to handle such kind of data these data include everything almost everything okay uh, the musicians uh, entertainment uh, things the CD drives whatever you speak on on an electronic media whatever you communicate through various apps everything whatever you post on various apps almost everything okay so that's why it is necessary to think a bit forward a bit more than just the conventional artificial intelligence or the machine learning techniques so that you can actually tackle such big data on which we are on which uh, I mean we are still not capable of handling them okay so we are working I mean in the in, in 2013 uh, the NASA and Google uh, came together to set up such artificial intelligence lab fortunate for me I have got chance to work in such lab uh, back in 2016 it was still new so um, developed some algorithms uh, for the quantum uh, artificial intelligence models and actually now uh, these methodologies are even uh, implemented in the more complex uh, machine learning models like neural networks and all this is the data which actually see you just saw that data is growing exponentially to tackle that you have to reduce the number of operations in the reverse manner so what is the reverse of exponent guys log that's correct okay okay so exponential growth in data tackled by the reduction in in the logarithmic manner that means number of operations become linear so George Ross is the founder of D-Wave I had this opportunity to work with him what he says that you use 512 quantum bits and your operations are faster than the all the operations combined together in the universe now that is astonishing isn't it in 512 classical bits you can just perform 2 to the power 512 operations but you give me 512 quantum bits and I can perform all the operations faster than all the operations combined together in the universe and you can see the statement by uh, the professor professor David of Oxford he is now pretty uh, he, he is now too old he actually did this research in his lab at Oxford and what he says that uh, it, the quantum computers have the potential to solve problems that would take a classical computer longer than the age of the universe now you do have the idea that how influential these quantum computers are and how influential they're going to come they're going to become in the coming future so this is something which is still not a buzzword but you are going to hear it very soon the moment you are going to hit the industry so be ready for it okay how many of you have heard of intel everyone right so intel processors very fast like Core i5, Core i7, and you know when I was here, I uh, we had a paper microprocessors. So we used to think that uh, why we are studying the 85, 86 microprocessors when we have i5 and i7. Why do we need it? We need it because you cannot develop the quantum computers until you have the idea of the 85, 86 processors. Uh, trust me, that is even a normal division on a 8586 quantum com on a 8586 microprocessor takes huge number of steps. It is not easy to make A divided by B 
on 85-86 microprocessor. So we made this comparison between the quantum bits and the bits until uh, computers now. But just appreciate the graph that you give me 300 qubits and I'm 500 times faster than the fastest Intel machine. Okay, how small is that? 300 qubits. That's like 300 A letters on a computer system. Am I correct? On a quantum computer, that's like 300 A letter. That's how the bits work on the classical computer, right? How quantum computer marries the artificial intelligence, okay? So in artificial intelligence, you have various kinds of subdomains. Don't worry about these domains. You go more into AI, you will understand these domains, but there are various subdomains in artificial intelligence. I will just give you one example. So how many seconds do you take to find out that the animal over there is a dog? If I show you the picture of a dog, how many seconds will you take to tell me that the animal is a dog? One second, even lower than that. But trust me, making a computer doing so is a tedious task. In, in classical computers, you give the number of bits as the input. Instead of bits, you give qubits. So for the four, four layer one by, uh, by bits, uh, how many qubits do you need? If you put four bits, you just need two qubits. If you put eight bits, you just need three qubits, right? That's how the quantum computers is helping machine learning. Now you understand that how we are making quantum computers interact with the machine learning and the artificial intelligence algorithms to make it like, you know, quite simpler to calculate. You know, this 130 exabytes or in 40,000 exabytes, which we are going to hit in 2020, will turn into trillion times of exabytes in no time. Okay, and we do not have the capacity, such regular computers, even in the GPU capacity that can handle such amount of data. That's why we are working on the quantum computers. Okay, soon the Google Maps, the Instagram, we even have that kind of uh, quantum computer labs in Instagram, not Instagram specifically, but Facebook. Okay, but Facebook has brought Instagram, so. Uh, in Facebook, which are actually working on such technology so that we can handle such kind of data. And as you know, Indian population is also going like crazy, population growth. So data growth uh, will be, I mean, double to triple times a normal exponential function. Okay. Uh, in, in, in the field of quantum computers, we do, you don't have the lamp. The, the layers in between. Anything in quantum mechanics, you cannot visualize. The reason for that is it is quantum. So you have the hidden neurons in between them, which actually operate such kind of things. For that, you develop the algorithms. 60 qubits can handle the data produced by humanity in one full year. That's like 60 A letters on a regular computer. So that's why Quantum artificial intelligence algorithms will be replacing the traditional algorithms, traditional AI algorithms in the near future. And that's it from my side. Thank you.